After Ohio State football's 3-14 loss to Missouri in the Cotton Bowl, a game that we will never forget for all the wrong reasons, Ryan Day said that he would be assessing the coaching staff, specifically on offense, and look for changes to be made, necessary changes, so that Ohio State football's program can improve heading into what I think is a very critical 2024 season. In a video which is linked in the description below, in the top right corner of your screen, and below the pinned comment in the comment section, I expressed a belief that I think Ryan Day needs to hire an actual offensive coordinator. He needs to give up play-calling duties and preferably also give up coaching the quarterbacks. And I gave several names. I gave Isaac Newland co-offensive coordinator and I believe running backs coach at Liberty, primary play caller this season, Brennan Marion, offensive coordinator and play caller for UNLV. I gave Phil Longo, offensive coordinator and play caller at Wisconsin. I gave Scott Frost, former elite offensive coordinator at Oregon with ties to Chip Kelly, which Ryan Day also has ties to Chip Kelly, and Ryan Grubb and Will Stein offensive coordinators at Washington and Oregon, respectively, who had some of the best and potentially the two best offenses in the country this season. Well, today, this is another episode, I guess, in a series talking about what I think are the necessary staff changes at Ohio State. This one is going to be shorter, as I don't have as many candidates for the strength and conditioning coach position, and it's harder to I would say make a hiring list for who should fit into the head strength and conditioning coach role, but I'm going to try and do my best. I will give some suggestions, but overall, I'm just going to outline why Ohio State needs a new strength and conditioning coach. I think we all know why Ryan Day needs a new play caller. He needs a true offensive coordinator. I don't think everyone understands why there needs to be change at the strength and conditioning spot. But welcome back, fellow football fanatics. It's your host, College Football with Sam. And before we begin this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, so that way you can get notified when I release more college football content. There will be a second episode out today, plenty of content for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday as we're heading into the national championship game, the final game of the 2023 college football season. I know that Ohio State is not participating in the college football playoff or national championship game this year, but I know that many of their fans, regardless, many of you, are going to be interested in that. So for that content, and also for more specifically Ohio State football content, which the Buckeyes are officially in their 2024 preseason mode, as is everyone except for Washington and Michigan, if you want more Ohio State preseason football content and early previews, predictions, even some recruiting news, which for me typically ramps up in the preseason, also hit the notification bell. If you want to support the channel and if you want to get insider access to bonus content, maybe short opinion writings or videos, and also my documentation of my travels to Houston for the national championship game, Check out my Patreon page via the link in the description and below the pinned comment, actually in the pinned comment, and sign up as an All-American or Heisman, and name at least one candidate for the Ohio State strength and conditioning spot. No changes from what I understand as of this very minute have officially been announced. I think Ryan Day is taking this week and potentially waiting after the national championship game before he makes some moves, but we'll get more into that later because there is a candidate who is connected to one of those teams who I think Ryan Day should call up. And no, it's not Ben Herbert, but we'll get into the other strength and conditioning coach, one of the best in the business, in a few minutes. Before I dive into summarizing why Ohio State needs a new strength and conditioning coach, giving some comparisons, and naming my candidates— I want to talk about games that I think give great examples as to why Ohio State needs to make a change. Let's start in 2021, 
and not with Oregon, even though that really is the the origin point of this journey, of this realization. That was the Oregon game, where Joe Moorhead and Mario Cristobal, Mario Cristobal, for all of his faults, typically coaches very physical teams. Just the game management and developed football IQ aren't always there, but they they recruit well. Alex Mirabal is one of the best O-line coaches in the country, and I forget the name of their strength and conditioning coach, but he's phenomenal there at Miami, um, and was also phenomenal at Oregon, where he was known for his famous mustache. I forget his name, but very good at his job, and Oregon in 2021 and under Mario Cristobal very much was a physical team. Aaron Feld was his name. Aaron Feld. Oregon bullied Ohio State. They ran them out of the horseshoe, and they won 35-28. But Ohio State improved throughout the season, and you could really chalk that game up as a fluke, as Ohio State only lost by 7. C.J. Stroud wasn't in his groove yet. At that time, he looked like an above-average quarterback in an elite passing system. By the end of the season, middle of the season, the offensive line looked better, the run game was on fire, or at least we thought, and Stroud looked like an NFL quarterback. Also, the defense improved. And then Michigan came. And Michigan, like an armored bulldozer, ran straight through the Lamborghini that was Ohio State. Ohio State being a team that looked a lot cleaner, looked nicer, looked better, but really just didn't have the same toughness or physicality. In this game, where Ohio State lost 42-27, to they passed the Buckeyes for 394 yards. Michigan only passed for 190. But Ohio State only ran for 64 yards. Stroud got sacked five times. I think Cade McNamara only got sacked once. And Michigan ran for 297 yards, averaging 7.2 yards per carry. And they ran for six touchdowns, one by Henning, Five by Hassan Haskins, who on himself, with 28 carries, had 169 yards. Michigan averaged more yards per pass attempt and rush attempt compared to Ohio State. And when you lead in a yards per play and also points per play basis on both the passing and running game, and you do better defensively as well, that is the marking of a team that's just straight up better than you and a team that is more physical than you, as you have to have dominance in the trenches to average more yards per play, more points per play, and to just play that much more efficiently than an opponent like Ohio State, who inherently has more talent than you, at least by what high school recruiting would say. In 2022, Ohio State and Ryan Day hired Jim Knowles. They hired Tim Walton, Perry Alano. They revamped the defense. They also hired Justin Fry to be their new O-line coach. And this team looked more physical. And they were, to a certain degree. To a certain degree, though, it was an illusion of, of sorts. And I think that Ryan Day unnecessarily traded some of the upside of his 2021 offense just to run the ball slightly better in 2022. And he didn't lose to a fringe top 25 or top 20 or top 15 team like Oregon in 2022. Could have done that against Penn State, but didn't. The Buckeyes rallied. They out-toughed Penn State. But then Michigan came to town again. And this time, Michigan averaged 11.1 yards per pass attempt and 7.2 yards per carry, compared to Ohio State's 7.3 in the passing game and 4.9 on the ground. And Michigan won 45-23. They ran for 252 yards. Ohio State gave up so many explosive plays, in part because Michigan was the physically better team. Michigan could protect J.J. McCarthy in the pocket with their elite offensive line, while Ohio State sent zero blitzes, giving McCarthy time to find receivers. Donovan Edwards, he was able to break through because of Michigan's physical offensive line double-teaming at times, and executing well in their blocking assignments, opening up holes for Edwards to run through. And whether it's J.J. McCarthy taking it in on his own, being his own blocker on third and goal, 
whether it's Ohio State respecting Michigan's physicality and allowing that Kalel Mullings fake pass play that went for 15 yards to Luke Schoonmaker. It was obvious later in the game that Michigan didn't just come in with a get better game plan. They were the more physical team. They were the better team. And against Georgia in 2022, 42-41, yet again another team that outran Ohio State. Georgia had 135 yards with six less carries than Ohio State, who only had 119 yards. Georgia, yet again, also averaged more passing yards per attempt. You're seeing a trend here. These teams didn't just run the ball more effectively than Ohio State. They passed the ball more effectively because they were that much more physical. And they were also, I think, better coached, better coordinated. But physicality doesn't, as I've said before, isn't only focused on stopping the run and defending the run, but it's also about pass pro. And it's about your tight ends. It's about your wide receivers blocking. It's about not being injured, which if Jackson Smith and Jigba wasn't hurt in 2022, I don't think that changes the outcome against Michigan. I surely think that changes the outcome against Georgia. And he just kept getting injured all season long. It's good that he's doing well with the Seattle Seahawks, but you're seeing a trend injuries, getting outplayed in both the ground and passing game, despite having one of the best passing games in the country, because your offensive line and defensive line and just your team toughness, physical or mental, isn't the best of the best. And Michigan and Georgia, I would say over the past three seasons, have been the physically and mentally toughest teams. Like that. They are certainly in their own category of physical and mental toughness. And then there's this year. This year, Ohio State did average more yards per pass attempt. I thought Ohio State did a lot to improve in 2023 to match up specifically with Michigan and to be more physical. But Michigan, without their head coach, mind you, and I don't think that changed a ton, but I think it certainly could have impacted the game, Michigan... This time you see it in fourth downs. They went three of three on fourth down. McCarthy averaged about the same amount of yards per pass attempt as McCord did. McCord threw two picks. McCarthy didn't. Michigan ran it for 156 total yards. Michigan really showed their physical and mental toughness when Zach Sinner went down with a devastating injury and plug in Carson Barnhart in his spot at guard, and Michigan just plainly carried on. They did. And after Henderson got dinged up a little bit, you noticed that Ohio State's run game began to take a step back. And I think Michigan was a less rattled team, both physically and mentally, compared to Ohio State that day, even though they made so much improvements. And then finally, finally, I promise I'm nearly done. We have the game against Missouri. Now, opt-outs, opt-outs change a lot of things. And we can't always take away things from bowl games where you're down to your third-string quarterback and your best wide receiver doesn't play. And one of your best linebackers, or more appropriately, best linebacker doesn't play. But for Ohio State to look the way they did on the O-line and to make that rotation where they didn't start Hinsman at center was bad. It was objectively just wasn't good. They ran for over under 100 yards only 2.9 yards per carry. They passed for 4.4 yards per attempt. They allowed four sacks, 10 tackles for loss. Ohio State's defense came to play. They were physical. Ohio State's defense was mentally and physically tough this season, and it helped. It helped keep the offense afloat for what was a very inefficient year because they gave the offense possessions and time to warm up. And that helped limit Michigan in explosive plays that they were able to earn in 21 and 22, as an example. The defense for Ohio State had six sacks and eight TFLs against Missouri. And yet Ohio State lost by 11, 14 to 3, because Missouri had 203 rushing yards. They averaged 7.1 yards per pass attempt. And it was just not a good game. And I think that game, plus the past two seasons, and even the loss to Michigan, and more than that, the injuries. Henderson not being able to stay fully healthy. Igbuka and Fleming not playing at full capacity. 
Michael Hall Jr. suffering an injury, Lathan Ransom suffering injuries. At times, Denzel Burke didn't play. The injuries have been piling and piling and piling and piling. And you know what program doesn't deal with that? Michigan. Ben Herbert, pictured on your screen, has revolutionized Michigan football. The reason Michigan's 14-0 right now, and the reason why I think they're going to go 15-0 and win it all, is because they're the best developmental program in the country. They are. And Ben Herbert is the genius He's the man behind that. And there are other programs who do a very good job of developing their players to to reach their ceiling, to be strong, to be athletic. Michigan at times this year and also last year looked like they were catching up to Ohio State on the athletic front. Now that's insane given that Ohio State recruits at a top five level every year, and sometimes Michigan struggles to recruit top 15, as we've seen recently, doesn't matter. Michigan is the deeper team. Michigan is the better team. And at many spots, Michigan is the more athletic, NFL-ready team than Ohio State. And given recruiting and the expectations, expectations at Ohio State, that's not acceptable. It isn't. And the Buckeyes have suffered injuries. They've been out physicaled for the past three seasons by multiple teams, whether it's Oregon and Michigan in 2021, Michigan and Georgia in 2022, or Michigan and Missouri this season. And even this season, you look at games like Rutgers and you wonder that if Rutgers had, if that pick six doesn't happen, or if Gavin Wimsatt's a better passer, or if the talent disparity isn't so massive, could Rutgers, with their physicality, with the fact that they jammed the ball down Ohio State's throat, could they have won that game? Or did they out-physical Ohio State in that matchup, but Ohio State, just with all their talent, was just able to pull away? There need to be changes. And it's not just add offensive coordinator. Or bringing in an offensive coordinator that can also coach a position group so that they can delegate more responsibility. It goes even deeper than strength and conditioning. It does, with Parker Fleming, for example, and people calling for Justin Fry's head. It goes deeper than that. Changes need to be made. And Mick and is not the only one to blame, I'm sure, as I've mentioned. Fleming, I've mentioned Day's play calling. And Justin Fry, his offensive line this year just has been more disappointing than I thought it was going to be. I thought they were going to be elite on the interior. And I think based off of what they were returning there with Matthew Jones and Donovan Jackson, that was reasonable. I knew they'd have struggles at tackle, but it was worse than I think a lot of us imagined. And the poor physicality shown by four- and five-star players is very concerning. It is. It's absolutely concerning. And you look at Michigan and the toughness, development, and depth that they have with Ben Herbert, Ohio State needs that. Now, Ben Herbert, I think, is the best of the best, and I think he's staying at Michigan. But you never know. And Ohio State, with how they recruit and the fact that I do think Ryan Day is a great near-elite, elite head coach— I think that Jim Knowles is a defensive coordinator who loves to be physical. He's a great developer. Larry Johnson is a good developer. And I think the defensive staff is wonderful. There are, you can hire so many different names. You can hire someone from lower level, non-Big Ten, non-SEC, Power Five. And you can hire a name that's not exactly extremely popular or well-known or inside the Big Ten. And I think it could be a great hire. Now, I have multiple names. I have Kaz Kazadi from TCU, Brady Collins from Wisconsin, Mike McDonald from Michigan State, formerly Oregon State before Jonathan Smith joined, and I have Mark Hill from Kentucky. And speaking of the coach that I was referencing to earlier, who's on Washington staff, you have Ron McKeefrey. Those are five names that I would look for for a strength and conditioning coach. Those are five coaches who I think could replicate toughness, development, and added depth. 
they could provide to Ohio State what Ben Herbert provides for Michigan. I think McKeefrey would be the best out of all five, but he's been following Kalen DeBoer from Fresno State. Washington right now is going to finish in the top two. They're going to be number one or number two, depending on the outcome of the national title game. They're on top of the world. And right now, he has a great job. And he's proven himself to be one of the best developers in all of college football. With the talent that Washington has, they're not even top 20 in 24-7 sports team talent composite. And they're one of the most physical teams in the country. They're mentally tough. They're physically tough. They have an X factor, a togetherness about them. And the strength and conditioning coach is extremely underrated because he manages the team and he trains them in the preseason. I've heard people say that the strength and conditioning coaches really acts like another head coach in the preseason outside of the regular season. Brady Collins followed Luke Fickle from Cincinnati to Wisconsin. Kaz Kazadi, I bring him up because I was impressed with what TCU was able to do in 2022, and they were able to run the ball at times this season, but they lost so much production that I think I was being too optimistic about their chances of using the portal and being in year two to be able to prevent the ship from nearly sinking, which when you go five and seven at a power five school, the ship is sinking or very close to it. But you could see the toughness and the training instilled in those TCU players in the 2022 season when they matched up against Michigan. Now, everyone remembers 65-7, to seven, but Georgia just had that much more talent than TCU, and TCU gave Michigan everything they had, probably with the staff knowing that if we do beat Michigan, if we're not going to have gas for the following game, because Michigan was that much more talented than TCU. Everyone in the 2022-2023 college football playoff was infinitely more talented than TCU. TCU essentially, in beating Michigan, used the mulligan, and they were going to get destroyed by Georgia or destroyed, but probably less so by Ohio State if Ohio State ended up taking that Peach Bowl game and holding on for the win. With their 3-3-5, they were able to stymie Michigan's run game, get pressure on McCarthy, and... Miller and Demarcado in the backfield were able to gash Michigan's strong defense. And Quinton Johnson and Tay Barber and Max Duggan, even in the passing game, they showcased physical toughness. Big, strong, willing to take hits, contested catches, and just amazing athleticism. Mike McDonald... At Oregon State, they produced elite offensive linemen. Their defenses were some of the best in the Pac-12. And you look at Gold and Silas Bolden. Those are receivers who are great, who had started a variety of Power 5 schools. Oregon State was a together program. They were cohesive. They were seamless in how they executed. And to build up a roster a good roster at Oregon State takes a lot of impressive works. So that's why I named him. And then Mark Hill at Kentucky, what Mark Stoops has done at Kentucky is great, and it's not appreciated enough. Kentucky takes, much like Oregon State, or like, to a lesser degree, Washington, TCU, and Wisconsin, they don't recruit in the top 15 or top 20 or top 25, at least Typically, Wisconsin, I think, currently is a top 25 recruiting class, and Washington has been climbing up the ladder there. And Kentucky, I think, has flirted with top 25 classes before, but they develop. Kentucky does. And they're good in the trenches. Their defenses are tough. And even when it wasn't Ray Davis, I forget the guy before him exactly, but he was a great running back, and their offensive line play is good. And that those are the markers, in my mind, of toughness and of physicality and of strength. And in the Big Ten in particular, we know this, looking at how Michigan's controlled the conference for the past three seasons. You know, the Big Ten runs through Ann Arbor now. And you look at the Ohio State teams, 
before Jim Harbaugh and Michigan evolved and took the Big Ten, you look at the previous Ohio State teams, they dominated in the trenches. They didn't just dominate on offense or in the ground game offensively. They owned on defense, too. So hiring a new strength coach will do wonders for Ohio State football. Absolute wonders. That is all I need to say in this video, I think. I wanted this video to be 5-10 minutes shorter than it turned out to be, but I think it was important to spend a few minutes on those games and on the five candidates that I mentioned because they're, this is a big change. It will be a big change if it happens. I wouldn't be shocked if it happened. I know Marathi was just given a raise before the 2023 season, but I don't think that Ohio State's strength and conditioning program is where it was under Meyer, and Marathi was a Urban Meyer guy. But coaches rise, coaches fall. It was perfect, for example, when Ryan Day was calling plays for the first few years at Ohio State. He was still a play-calling genius. And then 2022 in this season, it's become very evident. It's like, hey, you need to get an offensive coordinator. This isn't working. It happens in life, just in general. Things rise, things fall. There's a time for everything. And I think it's time for Ohio State to move on from Mickey Marathi and pursue great strength and conditioning coaches. I do think that McKeefrey, Collins, Hill, Kazadi, and McDonald, and there are definitely others, too, who I didn't bring up, I think that they would improve Ohio State and their strength and conditioning and their athleticism and their ability to keep their players healthy, all of which is important, especially in big games, which Ohio State has evidently struggled with for the previous three seasons. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment your thoughts down below. Thanks to Crash2488 for being my Heisman patron in January and December and sponsoring this video. Thanks to Spencer Bringhurst, my All-American patron, for sponsoring this video. And thanks to Will Loftus, Gabriel Callender, Roaming Gnome, Matthew Sale, Chris Lane, Austin Christmas, and Zubin Za for being All-Conference patrons and sponsoring this video. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you all around. Bye-bye.